So that extra $600 that uh, people are currently receiving in federal benefits on top of their unemployment insurance will be running out really soon. And when I say it's running out really soon, it'll be running out on July 31st, if I'm not mistaken. So, I, I mean, <laughs> the logical thing to do obviously is to extend that $600 benefit at a minimum. But really what people should be getting is a monthly universal basic income throughout the duration of this pandemic. Because when we're facing this unprecedented crisis, an economic depression, a pandemic, now is not the time to concern troll about whether or not our social safety net is going to foster dependency on welfare programs. It's not the time to penny pinch. But because our politicians have their heads so far up their own asses, well, that's exactly what they're doing. And I've got to say, they are not equipped to deal with this crisis. Um, Republicans are currently talking about how much additional revenue should be spent, you know, uh, bolstering our unemployment insurance program and, you know, why we need to currently, in the middle of a pandemic, make some tweaks to it to make sure that nobody's gaming the system. I mean, this is honestly insane and politicians should be terrified right now. And I'm not saying that they should be terrified because, you know, if they fail and they don't meet this moment, they're going to lose their re-election. They should be terrified because it's going to get so bad that people are going to take to the streets. The peasants will revolt with their pitchforks if you don't take action because, what we see coming, like what's ahead of us, is a gigantic iceberg. And we're sailing right towards it. And we're not trying to even get onto a new course. Like it's it's baffling. But Republicans don't want to renew the six hundred dollar benefit for, you know, a number of reasons. But the number one reason that we've seen cited by the GOP is that it's too much money. So as Jake Johnson of Common Dreams reports, progressives are rejecting out of hand a proposal by Senate Republicans to temporarily slash the weekly federal boost to unemployment benefits from $600 to $200 until states develop the capacity to implement a more complex system that would pay laid off workers 70% of what they earn prior to losing their jobs. Bloomberg reported Monday that the Senate GOP plan, which was approved by the Trump White House, will call for a two-month transition to the new unemployment system and provide states with an option to apply for a waiver for up to two additional months. Analysts warned that replacing the flat $600 per week payment with an individualized benefit that would overwhelm antiquated state unemployment insurance systems, potentially causing massive relief delays for millions of people on the brink of financial collapse. Now, believe it or not, that additional $200 that they're offering to people in unemployment, that is up from what they were proposing last week, which was, I believe, $100 extra per week. I mean, they just, they don't get it. But I shouldn't say that because I think they do get it. Because when they propose a new change to the system, a technical fix to the system, if you will, that could potentially overwhelm the system and uh, disrupt benefits, delay benefits. That's the point. Like, they want to delay benefits. They don't want to pay out people benefits because they genuinely believe that if people are on unemployment because they lost their jobs... Well, if you give them too much money, then they're just going to become lazy. Uh, and don't take my word for it. This is literally what the Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, said on national television. We want to make sure with the expiring unemployment insurance, we have the technical fix so people don't get paid more to stay home than they do to work. Wow. Okay, so let me get this straight. During an unprecedented crisis, an economic depression and a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic that is extremely contagious and deadly, He's worried that people who are currently losing everything are getting too much money. And if we give people too much money, if we don't just give them barely enough to survive, so that way they're starving, but they're still alive, then they might get lazy. I don't know what to say, but they do not realize what's coming if they do not take swift action to try to ameliorate this crisis. So back in June, 30% of all American households missed their housing payment. In July, that number rose to 32%. So we are facing an unprecedented eviction crisis unlike anything this country has ever seen. And if they don't take swift action, this is what they're looking at. This graphic should terrify every single politician. Some states have half of their populations or more facing eviction. That is insane. I mean, look at Florida, 51%. Uh, West Virginia, 59% facing eviction. Tennessee, 58% facing eviction. And even when you look at like 
other examples, states that aren't doing as bad, still a third of households in those states are facing eviction. Now, as CNBC's Annie Nova explains, on Friday, the federal moratorium on evictions in properties with federally backed mortgages and for tenants who receive government-assisted housing expired. The Urban Institute estimated that provision covered nearly 30% of the country's rental units. White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow said on Sunday that he would extend that moratorium, but these tenants are now unprotected from eviction. At the same time, some 25 million Americans will stop receiving the 600 weekly federal unemployment checks by July 31st, and most of the statewide eviction moratoriums are winding down. By one estimate, some 40 million Americans could be evicted during the public health crisis. It's like nothing we've ever seen, said John Pollock, coordinator of the National Coalition for a Civil Right to Council. In 2016, there were 2.3 million evictions, Pollock said. There could be that many evictions in August, he said. Massive unemployment has left more than 40% of renter households at risk of eviction, according to a new analysis by global advisory Stout Resus Ross. People of color are especially vulnerable. While almost half of white tenants say they're highly confident they can continue to pay their rent, just 26% of African American tenants could say the same. Around half of Hispanic tenants said they have little to no confidence they'll be able to stay in their homes. So for the time being, these people are unprotected. The moratorium on rent has expired. Now they say they're going to renew it. We'll wait and see. But if they truly allow this to happen and they let 40 million Americans in a single year be evicted, a majority of people in some states, they have no idea what's coming. So rather than, you know, literally worrying about people getting too lazy, actually help these people. They're suffering. And if you don't take action, you don't realize, like, you're not just going to lose this election. Like, we're talking revolution. We're talking riots in every single city if this happens. Because if people lose their livelihoods and they don't have a place to go, they have no choice but to riot, to demand the government take care of them. Because you've taken care of large multinational corporations. So it's time that you take care of your own people. And the fact that we have to fight you during a fucking pandemic... In the middle of an economic depression, it shows you how out of whack our government is. Like, this is honestly insane. Like, in a functioning country, this would never happen. We would never be faced with 40 million people getting evicted if our government actually functioned. But the way that we've responded to this economic crisis and pandemic, it's what we'd expect from a failed state. So the fact that they're just allowing this to happen, this march towards an eviction crisis, economic devastation... I mean, they have no idea what's coming. They uh, honestly believe that everything will be, you know, perfectly normal if they just let people lose everything. It's not going to play out that way. Uh, people are going to take to the streets and we're talking about a revolution if you don't actually take swift action. So if you care about the republic, then now is the time to make sure that you don't leave millions of people behind. I mean, the fact that we even have to beg them at this point with a crisis this deep to take action and they're still talking about laziness and welfare and how it's you know fosters this, this sense of dependency like it's gonna make my head explode um i don't even know what to say about this it's just it's genuinely shocking that they're not doing everything in their power to stop this crisis and help people and we have to fight them to do what's normally you know expected in other countries